In this video, we're going to walk through a document which shows how various code chunk options can be visualized in R Markdown. As you start, I recommend going to the website highlighted here, downloading the associated R Markdown file that I used to knit this file. Knit it to a PDF preferably so you can follow along and see how to create or how to apply the various code chunk options. As we talk about this document, there's gonna be a couple of different blocks we'll talk about. There's the source block, which is the code that you want to evaluate in our console within an R Markdown document. It's going to show in a typewriter font uh, and probably be highlighted. The syntax is probably gonna be highlighted in various colors and have a very light gray background. That is the source block. Whereas the evaluated code called the output block is going to be shown with a hashtag hashtag in front of it and look a lot like this. The first code chunk option we're going to talk about is the eval option, which specifies whether the R code in the source block should be evaluated. So in this example right here, I have eval equals true, and I want to, be eva I want to evaluate the sum one plus one, and the output from this is going to be a source block with one plus one right here, and then the output block showing the result, which is two. If we decide not to evaluate a code chunk, which sometimes occurs for various reasons, we would specify eval equals false. And even though I have code right here, which could be executed, this code chunk is going to produce one plus one, the source block, but does not evaluate the code in the chunk. Sometimes you can evaluate certain lines of code by, by providing a numeric vector to the eval argument. So if I have these three lines of code, first line, second line, and third line, and I have eval equals one, two, you can see that the source blocks here for each of the lines uh, do appear, but it is only evaluated for the first and second code block. So the first code block is evaluated and shown right here in the output block. The second line is evaluated and shown here in the output block, but the third line is essentially treated as a comment and it is not evaluated. So it's not actually executed and printed in an output block. Similarly, we could use eval equals negative C one comma three. And this would indicate that we want to evaluate all lines except for the first and third line. So if I included that in a code chunk that had the same code as before, I will execute the second line because that's the only one that is not one or three. And you can see that the second line here, we see the source block and we see the output block. Um, but we only have the source block for the first line and the third line because it was read by the R console, but was not actually evaluated and produced a, and, and did not produce an output block. Now let's continue by talking about the echo option, which essentially decides whether we should print the code to be evaluated, or in other words, should we print the source block? So in this example right here, we have echo equals true. And when echo equals true, it means that we show both, well, that we're gonna show the source block for the code to be executed. In this case, eval is equal to true by default, and so the results are going to be shown in an output block. If we have echo equals false, we are not going to print a source block for the code to be evaluated. So in this case, we have echo equals false. We want to evaluate the sequence one through three, and we can see that there is no source block when echo is equal to false even though the result is evaluated and we see the output block here. You can also, similar to the previous argument, the eval argument, you can print some evaluated code. So you can present, you can print some aspects of the source block here. So in this case, we have echo equals one colon two. So this means that we should echo the first two rows of the code to be evaluated here, which means that when I execute this, I should get a source block for one through three and four through six but not for, th for seven through nine because that is the third line. And so we can see once again, or we can see clearly here that we have a source block for one through three, a source block for four through six, but even though the third line is evaluated here, there is no source block. One more example here, if we chose echo equals negative one, that would mean that we should print a source block for all lines except the first. So if we, do, if we use that option on the same code as before, we are going to get we are not going to present, we are not going to return a source block for the first line because we want to print everything but the first line. So no source block here, but we do see the evaluated output, but we do have the source block for four through six and seven through nine as shown below. 
Now let's talk a little bit about how we can format the output block, which can be specified using the results option. So if you specify results equals markup, then the output block is going to look like regular output from the R console. So in this case here, we have results equals markup for the code one through three. We see the source block here, we see the output block here, and this looks very similar to what we'd expect to see from the R console. If you specify results equals as is, when it prints the output block, it's going, to it's going to print it as regular text. So when we look at the output block here, when we evaluate one through three, we can see that we get something that looks similar to what we have up here, but it just looks like regular text. There's no, stat there's no hashtag hashtag in front of the output, it's not in computer code, and so this is really just plain text. If you specify result equals hold, then essentially what it does is it doesn't interweave the evaluated code, or it doesn't interweave the source block and the output blocks. It shows all of the source blocks first, and then it's going to show the output block. And so in this example right here, we have results equals hold for one through three and four through six. And because we're holding the results, we have a source block with all of the code to be evaluated, and then we have an output, an output block that shows all the code evaluated in order. Lastly, if we specify results equals hide, it means to hide the results. And so in this case, even though we evaluate one through three and we see the source block here, there is no output block because we have hidden the results. Another argument that's sort of related to the results argument, though it works a little differently, is the collapse argument. And the collapse argument is a logical value indicating whether we should combine the source and output blocks into a single block. So in this case, if we have collapse equals true on the sequence one through three here, we can see that the source block and the output block are shown in the exact same code block. Now let's talk a little bit about how to style your code using chunk options. So the first code option we're going to talk about in this context is the highlighting syntax option, which is changed by whether highlight equals true or false. So we have two code chunks here. By default, highlight is equal to true. And so the first code chunk here when evaluated is going to look a little bit like this, or at least the source block is going to look a little bit like this. And you can see that we have some coloring here on function and on the plus symbol. And so the different aspects of the code to be evaluated are going to be colored differently based on some predetermined rules. If we specify highlight equals false, then when we, look, when we see the source block for the code to be evaluated, it's just gonna be plain black and white text, boring. Uh, so there's no reason that you can't have it like that, but I personally prefer to have highlight equals true. Some of you may be getting a little frustrated with the hashtag hashtag symbol before the output blocks that we've been seeing in these different examples. And you actually can change the characters before the output block using the comment option. So, so the default is hashtag hashtag, but if you want something more similar to the console output, you can use something like hashtag greater than. I will say that it's pretty important to include at least a single hashtag in your output so that people can copy and paste the, the output from the R Markdown document into a, the R console and evaluate it easily. So in this case here, we have two code chunks here, which we just use the default options for one plus one. We get a, the normal source block and we get the normal output block. If we specify a comment equals in single quotation marks, hashtag greater than, you can see that when we evaluate it, we get the same source block as before, but now our output block has a different comment symbol in front of the results. There are some code options that allow you to tell R Markdown that it should attempt to automatically reformat your text to make it look a little bit nicer. So in what follows, we're gonna show you a couple of examples. So there's way too many options for me to exhaustively document, but we're gonna show some examples using the blank and width.cutoff options and the tidy.ops option of the R code chunk. So in this example, we start off by evaluating a typical code chunk. And so you can see here that I have this ridiculously long comment that's kind of running off the page here. And then I have a blank line, and then I have mean one colon three, which should just produce two by the way, since it's just the mean of one, two, and three. And by default, this is simply gonna produce a source block that has this really long code running off the page and it's that, there's gonna be a blank line here. And so it pretty much is just gonna pr print it exactly how you specified it in the code chunk. However, if we specify tidy equals true, and we specify the appropriate tidy.ops options, 
which in this case is a list with blank equals false and width.cutoff equals 30. There should actually be a parenthesis here. I messed that up when I was typing this up. If you do that, then what it's going to do is it's going to attempt to automatically reformat this and it's with a, width, a cutoff width of 30, meaning that the out, this output for the source block should be longer than 30 characters. And also it's going to remove any blank lines here. So we can see now the blank line has been removed. Now let's talk about various chunk options related to plots. We'll start off with the fig.show option, which is related to the order of plots. And we're going to use the check weights data set in the data sets package, which, installed by which is installed by default in R to demonstrate some of the results here. By default, the fig.show option will produce the plots in the exact same way they'd be produced in the R console. So in this example right here, we have two plots that we're trying to, trying to construct. We have the source block for the first line of code and then the resulting plot. Then we have the source block for the second line of code, followed by the associated plot. So that is the default way that the fig.show option works. If we specify fig.show equals hide, then when you evaluate the code block, it's not going to show any plot at all. So in this case, we have the following code chunk with fig.show equals hide. And you can see that even though we have the source block shown here, no code or no plot is produced. If we specify fig.show equals hold, then what it's going to do is it's going to run or evaluate the code chunk. It's going to print the source block one line after the other, and then it's going to show all of the resulting plots one after the other in the output block. As we conclude this video, we're going to talk about figure alignment, figure captions, and the figure size. The way that you use these chunk options is actually fairly straightforward. So I'm really just going to show this. I'm really going to demonstrate this with a simple example. So in this case right here, we have a code chunk. I'm going to specify fig.align equals center, fig.cap equals fig1 colon figure de. And then I'm also going to specify fig.height and fig.width. I'm going to set both of those values equal to four. And then I have a plot I want to construct. And when I execute this code chunk, it's going to give me the source block that we expect. And if I scroll down, and I'm actually going to zoom out so we can see this at the same time, you can see that I get the resulting figure. And in comparison with the previous figures, we can see that it is a little bit shorter and a little bit thinner because I specified fig.height equals 4 and fig.width equals 4. I also have a figure caption here, figure de. Actually, I've kind of made something redundant here, but that's okay. And then lastly, you can see the alignment is center. And so while it's kind of hard to tell with these plots because they're so big, it's clear that this figure has been aligned in the center in the rendered document.